As the Baltimore Ravens head into this upcoming 2021 season, the theme for me has to be seeing is believing. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we are here to talk about a few things that Greg Roman mentioned on a conference call with PSL holders. Uh, but before we get into it, I gotta say, make sure we are building people up, not tearing them down. Because people have enough stuff that they deal with on a daily basis that continues to tear them down, uh, and we don't need to add to it. So let's work on uplifting each other and really commending each other and just rooting for each other. So, Greg Roman, of course, is the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Greg Roman, of course, has his history even before he came to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and we know Greg Roman's history as the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, but in the conference call yesterday, he said some things that were very, very interesting. And when I saw them being reported on, because I didn't get to hear the call personally, they really caught my eye. Now, the first one was Greg Roman, where he said, and it was a joke, uh, but you know, they had jokes. They always got some little kind of seriousness to them. But he said that anyone who will go away from the team's dominant run game should be put in a rubber room. And he talked about the need for balance. Now, him saying that, you know, the Ravens, these past two years, especially even going back to 2018. But ever since Lamar started, the Ravens running game has been levels ab above everybody else's levels. Uh, and Lamar Jackson is a huge part of that. Their running backs are a huge part of that. Greg Roman is a huge part of that. The offensive line is a huge part of that. So they all go hand in hand, and, and their running game has been elite. But with, with him saying that, it took me back to 2019, where these guys had this dominant run game. Uh, Lamar Jackson had an MVP season, uh, and they were just killing it. And, like, they, they could not be stopped. So then they get to the playoffs. And they say, you know what? Let's run six times. Or was it nine times? I think maybe it might have been nine. Either six or nine times. Whatever it was. Let's, let's not run the ball. Let's go away from the run game. So I, when, when he said that comment, it just, it just took me back to the 2019 playoff game. That's it. But more importantly, the comment that I really want to focus on. Uh, is where he said that Lamar Jackson will take snaps under center this season. Uh, and he said the percentage of which I cannot state. And he said it could change week to week. So this is something if you've been around this channel for a little while, especially last season, but definitely this offseason. It is something that we have been clamoring for. It is something that I feel like is a necessity because this offense could it just adds so much more to the offense it adds that much more to it and again like i said to to introduce this video i said for me seeing is believing last year we heard greg roman say hey i'm getting ready to forge a new identity i'm getting ready to forge a brand new identity for this baltimore ravens offense new identity what happened? There wasn't a new identity. It wasn't. That's why for me, seeing is believing. Now, I, I, I would expect them to have more snaps ready for Lamar Jackson, have more plays incorporated for Lamar Jackson where he is under center. And I, I expected that to happen last year. Why? Because we saw how bad snaps completely change a game in a very, very bad way. In a very bad way. We saw it in a Colts game. We saw it, in, and we saw it throughout some other games too, but specifically and especially in these games, we saw it in a Colts game big time. We saw it in a Patriots game big time. Like really big time. And then we, of course, saw it in the playoff game huge time. It was a huge yikes on that one. So the fact that the Baltimore Ravens had not incorporated more snaps under center throughout the season, it just, it blew our minds. And it was like, how could they not do that? How could they not, after the first time, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you a pass. But then the bad snaps continued and they still hadn't incorporated passes under center or plays under center. For Lamar Jackson and Baltimore Ravens, besides the goal line stuff. But they had not incorporated that. And if you incorporate that 
even without the bad snaps, even if we take bad snaps out of the equation, that just adds that much more to your offense. It adds that much more versatility to your offense. It does. So I feel like them adding those under center snaps, it, 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 would, it should be a given. But again, Greg Roman, he, he did say, he didn't say the percentage of snaps that it's going to be now. <laughs> and he said it could change week to week. So that could mean one week, he takes two snaps under center. It could mean another week, he goes up to three. Then the next week, he goes down to one. But, it, and I'm not saying that, oh man, they just have to incorporate it every single game. It, it all depends on the situation, but it adds versatility and flexibility to your offense. And those are things that you definitely want, especially the Ravens offense, and especially not even so much for the regular season. Even though in the regular season, the more reps you get doing it and whatnot, the better you'll be equipped for the playoffs. But anyway, uh, my guy, uh, Justin C. Shout out to Justin C. He's a team keep it clean patron. Appreciate that too, by the way. He asked a question. He said, hey, Graven, it's Justin C. Here, got a quick question for you. Greg Roman recently said that Lamar Jackson would be under center more, and stats show that he had only done so about 4% of his plays for his entire career. So, yeah, that's pretty low. Um, seeing how much more that helps receivers get to their spots and changes how fast defenses can play against you, do you think this change is showing how much of an impact T. Martin and Keith Williams are having on the offense? Love to hear your thoughts, and as always, keep up the great content. And P.S., I'm trying hard to make it to that Ravens game in Miami. LOL. We all are, man. But God, that's going to be a fun one. I can't wait. But anyway... Um, he said, do you think that this is showing how much of an impact T. Martin and Keith Williams are having on the offense? That's something that I did not think about at all. And it is a possibility, especially because T. Martin, he used to play quarterback. And that's something that he explained when he had his press conference the other day. He mentioned how with him playing quarterback, that's how he can help the receivers that much more because it allows it allows them to see, to get a quarterback's perspective on things. Somebody who understands both positions, the quarterback position and the wide receiver position. So that's a beautiful thing because it's the best of both worlds. And they obviously go hand in hand and they have to be on the same page in order to have the most success. So it could be that it could be that even though I, th I don't think it shouldn't it should have come to that, but that could be a possibility. And that would definitely be T. Martin and, and Keith Williams having a voice because that again, I keep on saying it. Them being the coaches, the passing game specialists, the wide receiver coaches, them being all that will not mean anything if they don't have a voice in the offense. And that's what they were brought in to do. They were brought in to help the Ravens passing game. Greg Roman was not fired. He was not released. He was not let go for a reason. Because what he does good, he does great. The running game, and I know a lot of people don't give the offense credit. Because it is a very complex offense. It is. With the running game and all that. I know Sammy Watkins talked about it the other day. About how there's so many moving pieces. And we know there's a lot of moving pieces. You know Lamar. About 10 seconds before uh, the play clock's about to run out. The, the Ravens run to the line. And then Lamar sending somebody in motion. He's sending somebody in motion. Usually the slot receiver. They send him in motion. They come across. Or the, he might move out the fullback. The fullback might be lined out wide or something. In the slot. And then he'll bring the fullback back in. And y'all know how it goes. But um, this, it, it shouldn't have come to this if this is the case. But the offense is a lot complex than a lot of people give it credit for. But the passing scheme, it just need a little bit of updating. The wide receivers, they need a little, a little more help. Uh, and just the offense in the, in the passing part of it, it just needed a little more adjustments. And a little more adjustments. And that's got to be something that happens uh, with the Baltimore Ravens um, is them – making better adjustments, and also just really going with what's working, man. It, what they still need to do is, and they did it a lot more toward the end of last year, but I think they, they got to start clicking a lot sooner rather than later. And if they can do that, then they can set themselves up for a lot of success. And one of the, 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 the things that I think with that, with them clicking a lot earlier and clicking a lot sooner and is making adjustments a lot sooner. And really attacking teams' weaknesses a lot sooner. If you know that there's something that they're struggling with, run with it. 
Roll with it. Strike that opposing team's defense with it. Hurt them with it. Two games that come to mind when I think about that from last year. Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs Monday Night Football. Woo! And now we get them again on primetime. That should be fun. First game at M&T Bank Stadium, too, I believe. But anyway, that game against the Chiefs. Ravens were running that ball. Oh, they were running the ball all over the Chiefs. Chiefs could not stop that run. What did the Ravens start doing? They got pass happy. They got pass happy. They got pass happy. The game started to get a little bit ugly. It didn't get too ugly, but it got a little bit ugly. But Ravens started getting pass happy. Took them right out of it. And the second game that comes to my mind when I think about that is a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Baltimore at M&T Bank Stadium. What happened? Ravens running all over the Steelers. Steelers cannot stop the run for nothing. They can't hold the Ravens' run. They can't do it. What did the Ravens do? They stopped running. They stopped. Now, I understand you wanted to switch it up, catch defenses off guard and whatnot, but again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we'll see just how much Greg Roman and his Ravens offense can fix the parts of the offense that were broken. We'll see just how much they can make adjustments. We'll see just how much they can tinker with some things here and there to where it's like, ooh, okay, let's go. But to where we can say that on a consistent basis, not just every once in a while. So I will continue to have the mindset that seeing is believing, and let's hopefully believe what we end up seeing. Love y'all, team. Keep it clean. We out.